Anthropologists who reanalyzed ancient fossils say they come from a new group of hominins living in Africa around 600,000 years ago and deserve a new species name. The species hasn't been identified based on new fossils, but on the re-examination of old finds. Homo bodoensis is the proposed name for these fossils of a group of hominins that lived in Africa during a period commonly known as the Middle Stone Age. The species is named for the bodo cranium, which was found in the Awash River Valley of Ethiopia. The anthropologists chose Homo bodoensis so that these African hominins would finally have an African name. Interestingly, West Africans today have up to 19% of their genes from a mystery ancient source, possibly this extinct human. More on that later in the video. The researchers argue that Homo bodoensis lived widely throughout Africa for hundreds of thousands of years. They suggest that other specimens of this species include Kabwe 1 from Zambia, the Ndutu and Galoba skulls from Tanzania, and the Saldania cranium from South Africa. Homo bodoensis may also have wandered into the eastern Mediterranean. Homo bodoensis lived in Africa around 600,000 years ago, and is believed to be the direct ancestor of the Homo sapiens lineage. However, this species was not the most recent common ancestor of Eurasian Neanderthals, Denisovans, and African Homo sapiens. Homo bodoensis had a pan-African distribution, with the peripheral range extending into the eastern Mediterranean. From here it could have contributed to the repopulation of European, and possibly Central Eurasian and East Asian, demographic population sinks after the glaciations. The Middle Stone Age is important because it saw the rise of Homo sapiens in Africa and Neanderthals in Europe. But human evolution during this age is poorly understood, a problem which paleoanthropologists call the muddle in the middle. Nevertheless, the study of human evolution in the Middle and Late Stone Age has experienced significant advances in recent decades. We now know that the origin of Homo sapiens was Pan-African and extends further back into the Late Middle Stone Age than previously thought. Furthermore, over the past two decades species that were contemporary with the Homo sapiens lineage, but are considered to have played little to no role in modern human evolution. Even though many of these hominid species were assigned to the genus Homo, they still attest to the complexity of the later Stone Age human evolutionary record. The Middle Stone Age is increasingly recognized as a key time frame that witnessed the appearance, on a global scale, of critical traits of later human morphology. These traits include greater encephalization, defined an increase in brain size, relative to body size, smaller teeth, and likely the differentiation of geographic groups. Nonetheless, the announcement of Homo bodoensis hopes to bring some clarity to this puzzling, but important chapter in human evolution. According to the Bradshaw Foundation, Homo rhodesiensis is also referred to as the African Neanderthal. It demonstrates intermediate features between Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis, with a close association to Homo heidelbergensis. It has been also argued that it was the ancestor of Homo sapiens adultu, which was the ancestor of Homo sapiens sapiens. As stated, Homo bodoensis is based on a reassessment of existing fossils from Africa and Eurasia from this time period. Traditionally, these fossils have been variably assigned to either Homo heidelbergensis or Homo rhodesiensis, both of which carried multiple, often contradictory definitions. Discussing about human evolution during this time period became almost impossible, due to the lack of proper terminology that acknowledges human geographic variation. The original description of the skull from the 1921 paper, titled, A New Caveman from Rhodesia, South Africa, states, quote, Its brain case is typically human, with a wall no thicker than that of the average European, and its capacity, though still not determined, is obviously well above the lower human limit. Its large and heavy face is even more simian in appearance than that of Neanderthal man. The great inflated brow ridges being especially prominent and prolonged, to a greater extent at the lateral angles. The newly discovered Rhodesian man may, therefore, revive the idea that Neanderthal man is truly an ancestor of Homo sapiens. Homo rhodesiensis retains an almost Neanderthal face, in association with a more modern brain case, and an up-to-date skeleton. He may prove to be the next grade after Neanderthal, in the ascending series, unquote. Previously, paleoanthropologists found that some fossils of European Homo heidelbergensis actually belonged to early Neanderthals, making the name redundant. 
For this reason, anthropologists say the name needs to be abandoned when describing fossil humans from East Asia. Further muddling the time frame, African fossils dated to this period have been called, at times, both Homo heidelbergensis and Homo rhodesiensis. Indeed, the latter species is poorly defined and the name has never been widely accepted. Under the new classification, Homo bodoensis will describe most Middle Stone Age humans from Africa, and some from Southeast Europe. While those from Europe will be reclassified as Neanderthals. Homo bodoensis separated from the Eurasian groups, before the split of the Eurasian forms into Neanderthals, Denisovans, and possibly other groups. While essentially an African species, Homo bodoensis may have played a role in the evolutionary history of the Levant and Europe. In a surprise, populations in many parts of Africa may have mixed and mingled to produce Homo sapiens, but at this point the picture is still blurred. Africans have little to no Eurasian Neanderthal DNA, but may have mixed with the African Neanderthals. There are indications that 2 to 19% of the DNA of four West African populations may have come from an unknown archaic hominin, which split from the ancestor of modern humans and Neanderthals between 360,000 to 1 million years ago. Anthropologists now identify at least three distinct and contemporary human lineages in Africa about 300,000 years ago, but don't know whether our ancestry was largely, or entirely contained, within the Homo sapiens part of that variation. These dates are around the same time the Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and Denisovan split from a common ancestor. The extinct human species, what the researchers call a ghost population, was a group of perhaps 20,000 archaic humans, who contributed genes to the ancestors of modern West Africans. The four populations came from three countries, two from Nigeria, and one each from Sierra Leone and Gambia. Scientists estimate the mixing occurred approximately 43,000 years ago, about the same time modern humans began taking over Europe from the Neanderthals. But the unusual DNA found in West Africa isn't associated with either Neanderthals or Denisovans. European Neanderthals used to be considered subhuman, but got a makeover when it was discovered that Europeans have significant Neanderthal DNA, so maybe the same will happen for the African Neanderthal. So what happened to this mysterious group of ancient humans? Scientists aren't totally sure. They might have died off, or they might have eventually been completely subsumed into modern humans. Nonetheless, they seem to have made a pretty substantial impact on the genomes of the present-day individuals. What other hominins lived during in Europe and Africa during the Middle Stone Age? In Europe, the Neanderthals emerged during this period, while further east in Asia their sister group the Denisovans also evolved. There were Neanderthals living in northern Spain 430,000 years ago. In the past several years, many European specimens previously described as Homo heidelbergensis have been reclassified as early Neanderthals. Homo heidelbergensis is named for a 609,000-year-old jawbone, found in Germany. A number of similar bones are known from Europe and Africa during the Middle Stone Age. But researchers differ on whether they are all Homo heidelbergensis, as we discussed. In southern Africa there was Homo nalidi, which is considered human, rather than subhuman, such as Australopithecus. Finally, modern humans, Homo sapiens, emerged in Africa around 300,000 years ago, about halfway through the Middle Stone Age. The problem is sorting out which fossils belong to which species, and thus how widespread and long-lived each species was. There is also the issue of figuring out which species gave rise to which. For example, it used to be thought that Homo heidelbergensis was the ancestor of Neanderthals. However, that cannot be true because genetics tells us that Neanderthals emerged possibly even before the time of the oldest Homo heidelbergensis fossils. Meanwhile, scientists say Homo heidelbergensis fossils found in Europe can all be reclassified as early Neanderthals, and that fossils from the eastern Mediterranean that don't quite fit any of the species could represent interbreeding. Where does Homo bodoensis fit into all of this? Archaeologists argue that all the African fossils previously called Homo heidelbergensis or Homo rhodesiensis should be thought of as one species, Homo bodoensis. This species, they argue, eventually gave rise to ours. But some archaeologists are skeptical of the claim that Homo bodoensis is our direct ancestor. 
In a study of the evolution of the human face, researchers found that the bodo cranium had gone down a different evolutionary path to our species. Thanks for watching, hopefully this information was clearly presented. And if you enjoyed the video, please share, comment, and subscribe.